Is it possible to stock your emergency food storage and remain on a budget at the same time? Rising prices, the rate of inflation, food shortages, trucking issues, all of those add up to one thing. The fact that it's never been more important than right now to have an emergency food pantry. But we've been hearing from viewers for weeks about the fact that they're very frustrated just trying to keep that balance of having food on the table right now, this week, and yet still maintaining and keeping a well-stocked pantry so that you have food for the future just in case you need it. So all of this month, really, the February Grocery Challenge has been all about answering that question. How in the world can you cut back on your grocery bills and still feed your family for an entire week and yet use all of the extra money that you're saving in order to stock or restock that pantry. You see, the truth is we don't believe that it has to be a decision of one or the other. It's not either or. Mm -hmm. It's not either feed your family this week or stock your food pantry. And we also don't believe that you're gonna to need to like double your food budget in order to get this done. So our goal all month long has been to show you how to do exactly that. Hey, in case this is the first time joining us, I'm Larry. And I'm Hope. And we're from Under the Median, where every week we talk about practical frugality. As we mentioned, this is the third week in our February Grocery Challenge. Now, Larry and I took on the challenge and said our personal goal was to feed our family for no more than $50 a week, and that includes breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So we've been spending about $25 a week at the grocery store, showing you our grocery hauls every single week, and then adding no more than about $25 of food from our pantry, our freezer, items we already had in the house. So combined, that total results in a true $50 weekly menu plan. Now, as we mentioned, this is week three. Now, just in case you missed it, a reminder that week one was all about how to plan your shopping plan before you ever walk out the door to go to the grocery store. There are lots of tricks that you can use in order to make sure that when you walk out the grocery store, you have a list in your hand that truly represents not only what you need, what is missing in the house, but also what is going to give you the best buy that week. In the second program, that would be the second week of the challenge, we were showing you how you can use just one or two ingredients and make all kinds of different recipes to feed your family a variety throughout that week. This comes in super handy when you find some staple food items at a terrific price at the grocery store, like potatoes. We got potatoes on sale that week, but we did not want our family to feel like they were eating nothing but potatoes the entire week. So we showed you how to avoid a family mutiny by day three because your kids are bored and feel like all you're feeding them is potatoes. We showed you that in week two. Now we come to week three. Week three, we're gonna really dig into how to purchase lots Loss leader items from the grocery store and use those items as the basis of your menu plan. And as always, throughout the entire month, we are encouraging you to take all of the money you have left over in your grocery budget and use that money to stock or restock your emergency food pantry. So before we move on to this week's grocery haul, we want to remind you that next week is the final week of the grocery challenge. And we want you to be able to view all of the videos that we did on the grocery challenge and give us your questions. What kind of questions come to mind as you're looking at what we did this month? And we will answer your questions on next week's video. So if there are any pressing questions on your mind about how to feed your family for less or how to make sure that you have a well-stocked food pantry and I've not answered them yet in the challenge. This is your chance to ask me those questions. So once again, make sure you leave those questions in the comment section of this video. So let's take a look at this week's grocery haul. Now this week, when I did my grocery haul, I wanted to do something a little different because the first two weeks of this challenge, I actually got most of my groceries from a local ethnic food market. Now, as much as I love that food market, I recognize that a lot of you probably don't have ethnic food markets near you. So I wanted to plan the whole menu this week based around items that I got 
only using items that I purchased from major grocery store chains. So let's take a look at what I got. Let's talk about Hy-Vee. Now, Hy-Vee is admittedly a Midwest grocery chain. Tell me in the comments if you have a Hy-Vee anywhere near you. If you're somewhere in the central area of the United States, you probably do have a Hy-Vee grocery store somewhere in your area. Now, the reason I wanted to mention this is because several of you had mentioned in the comments that you feel incredibly frustrated right now, that you're sort of having to try to make a decision about whether you buy regular groceries and feed your family, or you try to take some of that money and actually make sure that your pantry is fully supplied and fully stocked up. I totally get it. So this week, I wanted to show you how to look for a great deal at the grocery store and use that money to stock up. I'm going to show you exactly what I got and then tell you what I paid for these items at Hy-Vee. Hy-Vee was definitely the place this week where we were looking at restocking the pantry shelves. Hy-Vee in their ad said we have selected Hy-Vee brand vegetables 50 cents a can. Now here's something you need to know. A lot of times the grocery stores now are even including the salt-free versions of vegetables in their special sales. So go ahead and look for that and see if you can't find the salt-free version. If you, like me, want to be really careful how much sodium you consume, that's a great way to stock up and still stay within your grocery budget. Now, when I got there, I found about what I expected to find uh, on sale. I found the corn and the beans, and that's generally what you're going to find when it says selected vegetables on sale, but they did have the salt-free version of corn that was the same price as all the rest of the vegetables that were on sale. So I stocked up on those. Now, the other thing, and this was a huge surprise, guys, actually a happy surprise. If you've been watching the series, you know that I mentioned last week that there's a huge gap in my pantry right now in the tomato section. I've been unable to find canned tomatoes. Either I can't find them at all, or I can't find them at a price that I am willing to pay. Well, Hy-Vee fixed that problem for me today. Not only did they have just straight uh, diced tomatoes on sale, they also had tomato puree on sale and they had tomato sauce on sale and they were all the same price. But not only that, look at this guys. I want to show you what they had guys. So they had the petite diced tomatoes, which was great, but they also had some of the different varieties of tomatoes for the exact same price. They had the diced tomatoes with the green chilies. These were priced at exactly the same price per can as the petite diced tomatoes. But here's what I want to show you. Look at this photo that I took of the tomato suction. You're going to see those, those are the diced tomatoes, right? The row right next to them, literally right next to them are the chili starter tomatoes. They're not on sale, guys. They are $1.09, whereas the tomatoes that I bought on sale for 50 cents. But I want you to look at this. This was 50 cents. These are called chili ready tomatoes. Now, what the difference is between chili starter and chili ready, I do not know. But for me, the difference was about 59 cents again. This was less than half price. So all three of these, I'll hold them up here, 50 cents a can. So what did I spend at Hy-Vee? Ten dollars and ten cents. Now I want you to pay attention to that because if you believe that you really don't have the money to stock your pantry, I just got 20 cans of vegetables, of canned vegetables for ten dollars and ten cents. If you can get ten dollars in your hand, you can go and you can make a huge dent in restocking your pantry for just ten dollars. Let's take a look at what we were able to get at Kroger. Now, I mentioned that I went to large grocery store chains this week because I wanted to show you that even when you stick with those major chains, you can still stock up, you can still feed your family for far less than you actually think that you can. So I got some things at Kroger that were actually in the sale flyer. Asparagus, this was 99 cents a pound. Now, 
this is not spring and this is not asparagus season around here. So I really don't know <laughs> exactly how this asparagus is going to be. But I say I will say that it looked really, really fresh when you look for asparagus. You want the tops to be slightly purplish in color and you want them to be really tightly put together. If this was all splayed out, that would mean that the asparagus was a little bit older. So that's what you're looking for. You're also looking for asparagus that doesn't have super um, big diameter at the bottom. All right, because that will be a little bit tougher. Now, as far as asparagus goes, one of you asked me in the comment section if I had asparagus recipes. So you are in luck because I'm gonna talk about asparagus recipes and make sure it's on the menu plan this week. And I'm gonna show you how to use your asparagus without wasting one single bit of your asparagus, including the stems. Now, the other thing I was able to get there, they had these, these are medium Haas avocados, 47 cents each. It was limit five, so I got the limit, which was five. But here's what I wanna show you guys. I took some photos this week at the grocery stores to show you how grocery stores are deliberately going about getting you to spend more of your hard earned money at that store than you intended to spend. Look at these photos. Here was the avocados and I want you to look around the avocados. What do you see? You see large white onions. You also see some hot peppers and you see some Roma tomatoes. Why in the world would they put all the rest of those in the same display as the avocados? And the only thing on sale there was, guess what? The avocados, look at the big signage. Every single sign there says avocados, 47 cents, sale, 47 cents, on sale. But none of the rest of those things surrounding those avocados is on sale. It's for sale, but not on sale. That is called cross marketing. And you see it done a lot in grocery stores. What they're trying to get you to do is to buy all those things that are surrounding the avocados that go with that Mexican meal that they've now convinced you in your mind that you want to make. So you are willing to pay whatever the shelf price is for those onions and the hot peppers and the Roma tomatoes. So be watching for that. It's cross-selling. And if you start looking for it, you will find it all the time in your local grocery store. I told you there was an item I got that I really, I really am not sure I'm gonna regret this or not, only because it actually was, for me, a little expensive. It was marked down, I'll turn it so you can see it, $1.99, it's, it's a quart of chocolate oat milk. Now, why in the world would I buy that? Because you've seen me for the past two weeks trying to feed my family for $50 a week. And so $2 for chocolate oat milk is a little bit pricey. I am hoping that I'm going to be able to take this chocolate oat milk and make some kind of a dessert with it. Last week I included a dessert. This week I'm also going to try to include a dessert in our menu at least once this week. And I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with it, but leave me a shout out in the comment section if one, you think that I can do it, that I can create something interesting as a dessert with this oat milk and tell me whether you think I made a mistake or not. And if you got ideas for me, I'd so welcome those ideas in the comment section. One more thing I wanna mention before I tell you the total from Kroger is that this was priced per pound. So I thought it worth mentioning that whenever you see a price in a, an ad for a grocery store, make sure whether you're looking at the price per each, so in other words, $1 per bunch of asparagus, or a dollar per pound, because that can make a huge difference as to how much of this asparagus that you buy. When I saw it was per pound, I took it out, I weighed it carefully on the scale to make sure that I got as close as I could to two pounds, because I knew I only wanted to spend about $2 on the asparagus. I did the exact same thing with the grapes as I did with the asparagus. These were on sale $1.48 a pound. I measured them out to get as close as I possibly could to two pounds, 1.93 pounds. So we were really, really close at $1.48 a pound. What was the total at Kroger? $9.28. So the total that we spent on our basic groceries and our grocery haul this week was $19.38 all together. Once again, stick around because I'm gonna show you how I add some items for my pantry and my freezer and create an entire menu for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for my family for no more than $50. 
Now I told you that we went to two stores and I did, uh, and there's still a few things in front of me on the table. What's the deal with these things? This was free. My friend Marie grows these and she brought me one, two, I can't hold them all up at once, three. She brought me three of these lovely butternut squash. So you're gonna see me this week roast these butternut squash and then use them in several different recipes. They were once again free. And that's something else I feel like I need to add. When you're able to find something for free, go ahead and take advantage of it and make sure that you know you're going to either cook it right away and do something with it, or you are going to preserve it for later use because free, that's the right price, isn't it? Here's also some mandarin oranges, 11 of these. These were left over after a meeting that I went to today and they offered to send them home with me. So I was happy to take them home with me. All right, that's the whole grocery haul. Stick around because I'm gonna show you what I do with all this stuff and how it looks in a weekly menu plan. Now in this week's menu plan, I was seriously greatly helped by the fact that I had some items that were left over from week one and week two of the grocery challenge. All of those items have already been accounted for as far as that money is concerned. So basically that is like the free spot in the middle of the bingo card guys. Cause whenever I incorporated those ingredients specifically, they were already accounted for as far as being paid for. And I didn't have to put them down as an additional cost on this week's grocery menu. So I had plenty of potatoes left. I also had those beautiful butternut squash that my friend Marie had uh, grown and given to me. I did have something else. I'm gonna reach down here and grab it. We got this for free too this week, which was really helpful. My friend, Tony, it appears that apparently her children and grandchildren do not like great Northern beans. <laughs> so she gave them to us knowing that we would appreciate great northern beans. So I got this two pound bag of great northern beans, which I'm going to use this week, and it cost me zero. That's the right price. <laughs> <laughs> because of the things that Hope had left over from the first two weeks, this week became a very easy matter for her to not only stock the pantry up a little bit, but also have plenty of food to cook for us for this week. And to stay within my $50 weekly grocery budget. So the bean of the week was the two and a half pounds of garbanzo beans and the two pounds of northern white beans. And this helped Hope to make a huge crock pot of smoky white bean soup for the midwinter soup luncheon that was at our homeschooling co-op, and that's on Friday. I buy the garbanzo beans in 50 pound bags for my good friend Saeed at the Mediterranean Mart, which means that I get them for about 75 cents a pound. And that is a super good price for garbanzo beans. The garbanzo beans made an appearance several times in this week's menu plan. They appeared alongside some roasted butternut squash and we put kind of a Middle Eastern curry type sauce over the top and served it over white rice. It also showed up in some homemade hummus. You guys, if you've never made homemade hummus, it is so incredibly easy to do. Five minutes, either in your Nutribullet, in your blender, or in your food processor, and you can have hummus that is smooth, that is delicious, and costs you literally a fraction of what you would pay for hummus at the grocery store. Now remember, when we talk about these items and we show the photos, if you wanna see more photos and you want links to the recipes, this entire $50 menu plan is on the website, and I'll make sure that there's a link to that post in the description of this video. The hummus was the basis for a dressing for pasta salad, and then Hope roasted some of the leftover garbanzo beans in the oven until crisp. And if you've never had roasted garbanzo beans, so they are crisp and flavorful, and they make a great topping for salads for a snack. Now tell us in the comment section, have you ever had roasted garbanzo beans and did you enjoy those roasted garbanzo beans? We love them. For this week's menu, the potatoes were the star of the show. And with those, Hope made a really good vegetable pot pie. And instead of the usual flour-based crust, she made a crispy potato crust. And boy, the family loved so that. Good. We all begged for seconds. 
And then Hope made three soups for the week. The first soup, of course, was the smoky white bean soup that I made for the midwinter soup luncheon for our homeschool co-op. Took that along with me. There were two other soups. These were both smooth soups. The ends of the asparagus. Guys, you can use asparagus ends. Do not throw them out. Asparagus ends make a wonderful soup when they are cooked and you can puree them till they're smooth and it's really, really good. Asparagus end soup. And then also with the butternut squash, of course, I made some butternut squash soup, which we absolutely Oh, really good. Love. That is really good stuff. This week also, Hope made a batch of her wonderful homemade bread and along with that, 24 dinner rolls that she served for a dinner where we had all our boys and their girlfriends over. It was really nice. They were warm right out of the oven. And she also makes a killer homemade tortilla. Now, if you've never made homemade flour tortillas, they are so incredibly easy. Once again, I'm going to make sure that the recipe is linked in the post at the website. I have used the same tortilla recipe for years. Four ingredients. I roll them out with a rolling pin. You do not need a tortilla press. They come out perfect every single time. And they cost me about four cents per tortilla to make. What I like about Hope's tortillas is they're thicker than the ones you buy at the store, and that makes them a little bit more substantial. Remember to see photos and get links to all the recipes. You can see all of that at this week's $50 menu post. It's at the website. There's a link in the description of the video. Hey, right now, we want to make sure that you have all the information you need to feed your family and stock your pantry. So if there are any questions that we haven't answered in this series, leave those questions, will you, in the comments section of this video. And then next week on the final installment of the February Grocery Challenge, we're going to take some time in that video and we are going to answer your questions. And speaking of videos, if you missed the first two videos, we're going to create a playlist, mm -hmm. which is going to be right over there. And you can watch those next. Remember to leave us your questions in the comments below, and we will answer those questions on the final week of our February Grocery Challenge.